Um, you've got three solo CDs. I have. Out, and the last one was a bit of a departure from the previous two. In terms of, the first two are quite traditional. Mm -hmm. The third one was a singer-songwriter. If you like, yeah. Yeah. Is that not accurate? Yeah, I mean, I, I hate that term. Okay. Um, because uh, it sort of uh, conjures up, you know, kind of wafty, acoustic kind of. Um, uh, <laughs> don't know what I'm trying to say, but um, you know, it's not necessarily a great image. But uh, maybe that's what it sounds like. Maybe it's a load of wafty acoustic rubbish. But um, yeah, it is. Uh, it was sort of the idea was that it was my own songs, yeah. uh, more so than the other two albums were. Yeah, yeah. And you covered the Moonstruck one. I covered the Moonstruck one by the band, yeah. I'm a big fan of the band. Um, and that's one... I didn't want to do like a well-known song, you know, yeah. by them, that'd be silly. But uh, that was one which I tried and seemed to work quite nicely on, uh, on the bazooki. So, yeah, I, I do that. do that a lot, that song. And the first one's completely out of print now. <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't. Th I don't think it's going to stay that way. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's uh, yeah, it's not available at all. I don't think. But it's um, no, yeah, it may be. I was in a very different place then, shall we say? Okay, fair enough. Um, are you working on the next one at all? Nope. No. No. <laughs> okay, um, but you're playing with a trio now. Uh, I did a few gigs with a trio uh, in April. Um, just a few. Because uh, I wanted to try, I wanted to try it out basically, um, try out sort of having having a bit of a band. <clears throat> that was the idea, um, and okay. it did work very well. Yeah, it worked very well. But um, uh, I was sort of busy with lots of other things going on. No, yeah, completely. Um, so it's hard to find out, to find the time to fit it in uh, with all of that, um, and also you know I'm, I need to know where I'm taking it. <clears throat> And if uh, that's a worthwhile place. Which particular combination of trio did you, did you take out? Uh, I had percussion and Cormac Byrne, uh, who plays with Ishkadur, um, uh, on percussion. So, cajon uh, and cymbals and lots of percussion. Uh, and double bass, a guy called Sam Norman on double bass. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, I, just, I thought I'd just try the. Uh, you know, guitar, bass, drums kind of kind of setup. Yeah. And it worked very well. It did work very well. I'd like to do it again. Um, but I don't Just quite know when. Find the time. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I've like seen quite disparaging more. about the banjo quite a lot. Well, it's a banjo, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> what can you say about the banjo? <laughs> I remember you, you, you said once that tuning it was counterproductive. Uh, yep, yeah, it can be, yeah. It can be counterproductive. Um, yeah, I mean, it's an abominable instrument, really. Um, should never have been invented. But, um, you know, so I like to sort of put myself through hell. Yes. Um, just to keep myself on my toes, really. And yet you. By playing the banjo. Right, what wall break on it? I did, yeah. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know why I did that. I was, I was in a very strange place. <laughs> yes. um. On the album before that, you have a, uh, a tune called um, Unclosed Nocturnal Manuscript Crisis. Yes. Uh, what was the inspiration behind that? <laughs> well, <coughs> uh, the story is, I would uh, I was in bed, I had gone to bed, uh, so I'd take my clothes off to get into bed, which I, generally speaking, tend to do. Um, and uh, after I got into bed, this tune entered my head. <coughs> um, and uh, it sort of, uh, it became more or less a complete, complete thing quite quickly. Yeah. So I thought, right, shit, I've got to, I've got to do something about this. And I, d I didn't have anything to hand to record it on. Um, and I couldn't find any manuscript paper and it was, it was uh, the middle of the night. <laughs> um, so I was wandering around the house trying to find manuscript paper or some form of uh, getting this tune down so that I couldn't, so I didn't forget it the next morning. So I eventually ended up uh, drawing out my own manuscript paper <laughs> and writing it out on that. So that's why it's called Unclosed Nocturnal Manuscript Crisis. And 
And now it's got a live favourite with Bella there. Yes, yeah, we do it live. We did record it as well uh, for the Mattachin uh, sessions. It didn't make it to the album. Um, I think it's available as a download though. You can get it on iTunes. Yeah, yeah. I believe so. Um, searching through some old CDs and I came across a band called Amber Quartet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, you were in the Amber Quartet, weren't you? Well, uh, I was. Yeah, was I in the Amber Quartet? Did they do? Well, the first thing I think. It was possibly the only thing I did with the Amber Quartet was a recording with... So the Amber Quartet was Ian Giles um, from Oxford, Paul Sartin, John Spires. Um, I think it was a fairly sort of fluid yeah. uh, line-up. <laughs> um, yeah, but we did some recording... Uh, in a church in Oxford for a series of uh, pastimes type CDs. Yeah. Um, folk music of England, Scotland and Wales yes. kind of thing. <clears throat> um, so that's what, that was my experience with the Amber Quartet. When I did various other gigs with Ian and obviously with Paul and John and John and everything. Um, but yeah, that, I think they did quite a lot. They did a tour in Germany Dan Plews was involved at one point, and uh, uh, yeah, it was kind of, it was mostly in Giles' thing really, I think, because he had an album called The Amber Triangle. Uh, <laughs> you'd think so, you? oh, no, okay. I'm, I'm not sure it was to do with the amount of people, I think it was to do with a triangle in Oxford, All right, okay. probably between pubs, I would imagine. <clears throat> um, 